Hi, and welcome to Evaluating Websites with Kapow, presented by Daniel Bradford, the Los Osos High Library teacher. That's me. In today's short video, we're going to look at five different criteria represented by the acronym Kapow, C A P O W, that we use to evaluate the quality of websites for research. I'm going to show you one good example for each of the five criteria and one bad example for each of the five criteria. By the end of this video, the goal is for you to be able to apply these five criteria to evaluate any website that you find during your search and be able to determine whether or not this is something that you want to include as part of your research package. So, let's get started. First, what is this Kapow? Kapow is an acronym that stands for Currency, Authority, Purpose, Objectivity, and Writing Style. So, let's first look at currency, which is whether or not the information is old or new. These are the questions that we ask when we're evaluating a website for currency. We ask, when was the website published? When was it updated? The publication information is usually found at the bottom of a website page, but sometimes it's in other locations, so you have to look around. Many times the publication date also equals the copyright date. So if you see a copyright date, that's the publication date and can be used to evaluate the currency of a website. Now, why is it important to know the currency of a website? In other words, the publication date or when, how old the information is. That's because we need to know how old a website can be and still be useful. And that depends on the content of a site and its purpose. So if you're doing current events, like something that's happening right now in the world, for example, the spread of the Ebola virus in Africa, you need a current copyright date. You don't need information that's a month old. You need information that was created today or yesterday. Science sites, if you're doing research in science, should be a maximum, notice I said maximum, of three years old. That's because science is a fast-moving field. The information gets outdated quickly. Do not use science sites that are more than three years old. A history or literature site is a, di a different deal. We don't get a lot of new information about, say, the American Civil War, and Shakespeare stopped writing plays about 500 years ago. So a history or literature site can still be good as far as currency goes if it's older than three years. So now let's look at an example of a site that has good currency. ScienceDaily.com. I looked at the bottom of this website and I found the copyright date right away. Copyright 2014. That's really good. That means that this is a current up-to-date website. I also looked for today's science news and I looked on August 17th 2014 and at the top of each article Science Daily publishes the date that the article was uploaded to its site. This article was uploaded on Sunday August 17th 2014 the same day I read it so it's very current and again you, this is what you would expect from a website that says Science Daily. Also notice that Science Daily makes it very easy for you to find the date. They don't hide it from you. Now, let's keep going and let's look at an example of a website that has bad currency. Here's the bad one. This is pinknoise.com and it's a website that's supposed to be about the Cold War, I looked in the bottom, I looked at the top, I looked in the middle, I looked everywhere, there's no date listed. I would not use this website simply because I don't know how old this information is. There could have been updates to the information that's presented on this website, and the website has other problems, but there could be updates. I wouldn't know. I don't know when this website was created. I don't know the last time anything was put on this website. I'm going to pass on this one as far as currency. Now that's the C in Kapow. Let's move on to the A in Kapow. Authority. Authority asks these questions. Who created or maintains the website? Is this person or is this group expert or experts in the topic of the website? 
this is another important one. Is there a way to contact them if you have questions or want to verify some of the information on the website? And does the site have gatekeepers? Gatekeepers just means are there editors or is there somebody checking the facts on this website? That's not always easy to tell, but I'll show you some ways that you can try, that you can try and find this. So let's look at a good website for authority. Here's one, cbsnews.com. If you don't recognize CBS News, then you probably are not watching the news. CBS News is one of the oldest news organizations in the country. And at the bottom of their website, I found a way to contact them. I also found a link to bios, which shows that the people who are creating the content for this site are very experienced reporters. They're, um, they also have gatekeepers because they have editors listed here and those are people who check the work of the reporters and they also have something called about CBS that tells me what a reputable news organization it is so the four good things they have contact us they have biographies of news reporters the about link shows that the institution is a respected news organization and it has gatekeepers in other words like any big news organization, CBS employs fact checkers and editors to make sure that the reporters don't make a mistake. And so the information on here has very high authority. We can trust CBSnews.com most of the time, nearly all of the time, for accurate reporting. Now here's an example in this next slide of bad authority. I was looking for information on Robert Frost and um, I found this website and at first it looks good because it's got all of these uh, Robert Frost poems, uh, the full text of them, but then I looked around. Where can I find the authority of this person? Who put this information on here? And it says on the website, my qualifications are as the son of an English teacher, a BA in English, and a person who was blessed with the opportunity to be exposed to these poems at a very early age that's not very good I want a literature professor maybe somebody who's teaching at a college somebody who's an expert in Robert Frost literature to present this information to me and when I followed uh, the author's about link it took me to this which is just more links in other words it didn't tell me anything about JJ Ketzel so even though it, he has an about link, there's nothing on here that would really tell me anything further about his qualifications. Not only that, but there's no way to contact him. So, and there are obviously no gatekeepers on this site. This is some guy's personal site. He loves Robert Frost. He loves Robert Frost poetry. That's great, but he doesn't have a lot of authority. He's not an expert in this. I would pass on this website. Now let's move on to the P in Kapow, which is purpose. Purpose just asks you, is this website trying to convince you of something? Is it trying to sell you something? If the answer is yes, then the site is biased. It has a particular point of view that it's trying to push out there. Bias doesn't mean that you can't use, does not mean you can't use the information, but it needs to be verified. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. First, let's look at a website that has good purpose factcheck.org and you can see from their mission that they are a nonpartisan nonprofit consumer advocate website they um, their purpose is to inform you um, on both sides they're not taking sides Democrats Republicans independents they're going to give you or try to give you all sides of the issue and when you look in there about us that's what you find as far as their uh, mission goes and move the, and when you look in about us they also tell you all about their funding so you can see and evaluate for yourself who's funding them because whoever provides the money uh, usually has a say in how things go on the website and they're telling you that they are very open about who funds them and they're very open about um, their purpose and their mission which is just to educate and inform so I would give this site uh, good marks on purpose. Now, here's a website that has bad marks on purpose. The Nuclear Energy Institute. Now, this website looks very good. It's very professionally designed, but it's got some problems when it comes to purpose. 
because this is an advocacy organization and that means they want to promote the use of nuclear power and not only that but when I looked around in this website in the about link and why nuclear energy I found out that their mission is to promote nuclear energy and then I did some more digging on the website and they admit that they are funded by the nuclear energy industry that doesn't mean that they're lying to you but this is a red flag that the information that you find on here may not be objective and we'll talk about objectivity in just a second but when someone has a particular point of view and they and this website is very good at telling you about that then that's a sign that you have to be a little bit careful let's move on to uh, objectivity which is closely related to purpose objectivity j just asks the question are they telling you all sides of an issue if the answer is no then the site is biased the information they give you may be true but it may not be all of the information so they're not lying to you they're just not telling you everything they're only telling you part of the truth now here's a website that has good objectivity the environmental protection agency the federal government this website presents all sides of the issue there that's a government agency they're not trying to sell you anything as a government agency their purpose is just to get information out there to educate the general public and the, and for example here they're telling you about the clean power plan if we look here you can see that they're giving us all sides of the issue on climate change and they're not lying to us by leaving anything out they're telling us all points of view on client all valid points of view on climate change and they define it for you so I would give this site very good marks for objectivity now here's one that I would give bad marks the American Enterprise Institute and when they are talking about global warming this is what we have to remember they offered cash to scientists to dispute a, a climate study and this is a little I did a little bit of googling to find out whether or not these guys were objective and I found out that th their climate um, change studies were funded by Exxon Mobil which is a big oil company and Exxon Mobil doesn't want you to um, believe that climate change is happening and you can see that the American Enterprise Institute received more than 1.6 million dollars and 20 of its staff members have worked as consultants to the Bush administration that's George W Bush not his father and a former head of Exxon Mobil is vice chairman of um, the American Enterprise Institute's board of trustees this means that they're they're not very objective about the issue they have a vested interest in not telling you everything so I would give these guys a pass on objectivity but I did have to do a little bit of digging and you may have to do some googling to find out if a site is objective now the last one writing writing is simple this is just about the ease of use of the site and the quality of the site if a site is hard to use it's not a good website let's go back to sciencedaily.com it's a very easy website to use it's got a search box the date is easy to find it has a mobile version and, and easy to navigate toolbar it can be easily shared saved printed and the site is not cluttered I'm not going to show you a bad example because I think you know what a bad example um, for W looks like the, if if you say wow this site is really hard to use you've evaluated it and given it a bad mark for the W so let's review Kapow, currency, is the information old or new? Authority, who created the information, are they experts? And purpose, are they trying to convince you of something or sell you something? Objectivity, does it give you all sides of the issue or just one side? And writing style, is the website easy to navigate? By applying these criteria, you can evaluate whether or not a website is something that you definitely want to use, might want to use with some more checking to verify the information or that you definitely don't want to use. If you have any further questions, you know where to go, the Los Osos High Library. We are open five days a week to answer your questions. Thanks for listening, and I hope that you weren't too bored of this boring video production.